I'm Sal. I'm Beth. We are the brewery lovers here with the Windy City Report, Chicago. It really was windy. When it we was went windy. In. There was actually a tornado. <laughs> tornado warning. watch. We Got weren't sure if we were going to get blown away in the middle of the night or whether another semi was going to get blown on top of us. Yes. But we survived the night. Got to see the Sears Tower get hit by lightning. That was pretty exciting. I missed and it. I was driving. Scary at the same time. However, uh, I I digressed. The nickname has nothing to do with the weather. It has to do with politics. Because there are all these politicians making speeches in oh, Chicago. That's why it's that. called the Windy City. I, I thought it was wind off <laughs> the, nope. the lake. But it was really, really windy when we went in. It tornado, was. Tornado watches, right? Or, it was, yeah, it was, it was bad. pretty alarming. Anyway, a little rocking and rolling that night. Despite all our efforts of watching the weather and trying not to be someplace dangerous... That was the day we blew it. Sometimes it sneaks up on you. Yeah. We didn't blow it. it was, none of that stuff was changed. predicted. Yeah, exactly. So first brewery we hit was um, in the old Berghoff's restaurant, which is this classic old Chicago place. It was really fun going there. The brewery is called Adam Street because the place is on Adam Street. And uh, just a classic Chicago cocktail bar restaurant kind of place. And it was we didn't really even have it on our radar. We stumbled across it. No, we it. just, we went to see something else and we f- found it. But look how beautiful this place is. It was a gorgeous old bar. Yeah. And we were, um, tons of stuff on tap. We were fortunate to sit next to a young woman who was um, in between trips, I guess. Yeah, she was in she, Chicago for work. She grew up in but Chicago. she grew up in the area, and she and her mom used to come to this restaurant all the time yeah, she when she was, was a kid, so it was very was nostalgic for her. And she was also a, a big beer nerd. We had a lot, yep. of, lot, we had a lot of, to talk about. a lot in common with craft beer. Uh, the beer was solid. It wasn't like, oh, my God, but it was solid, and the place was just gorgeous. So uh, Just a couple blocks away from Millennial Park, yep. so it's right in where everybody wants to be when they visit Chicago, so... So we had Smile for Haze, which was a 7.8% hazy New England IPA. The Turbulator, 8.3% Doppelbach. Yeah, that was nice. It was good. And A-T-O-R, that's a Doppelbach thing, right? If it ends, if the name of the beer ends with A-T-O-R, generally speaking, yeah, that's a German yeah. thing. Um, and Go and Plaid, which was a Scotch Ale. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty they were good. all big. That was 8.8% too. It was a fun time. <laughs> this is Mars, which was a really good brewery, actually. And it was off the beaten track, which made it drivable. We didn't drive everywhere in town because it was a little daunting. So we took the train around. Yeah. Um, we got a weekend pass. So it was good all day Saturday, all day Sunday. And it was, it was only $7 per person. That is the way to get around Chicago. It was really perfect. Uh, couldn't have been better. And because we wanted to go out to the Science and Industry Museum. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about that in a minute. Talk about Mars first. Okay. Uh, We spent the entire day at Mars. (laughs) We were meeting friends. Meeting friends who Who were out of... got a little delayed. They were out of town. I can't remember where they were. It doesn't matter. They were on vacation in South Carolina. Okay, they were on the East Coast. they just flown back that morning. They live in Chicago, outside of Chicago. And um, we really tried hard to rendezvous. And we did, but we... It took them a while to get there because they were just coming back and they did they did a lot of running. So as a result, we tried almost everything. <laughs> we tried a lot of beer. We had an extended stay there. And uh, really kind of a funky, cool brick vibe here. I like what they did, this post-industrial. This looks like a disco. And when you look up at the ceiling, you can see it really, really looks like a disco. A lot of disco balls. With We've, lampshades. Yeah, it was really clever. Kind of cute. We found disco balls in breweries. Everywhere, but never this many <laughs> in one brewery. That was and rarely with lampshades. Never with lampshades. That was next level, but fun place. It wasn't real crowded, so we kind of uh, had the place to ourselves, which was fun. Here's our buddies from uh, Illinois. They live north of the city, Mike and Alyssa, and uh, yours truly. Uh, what did we like over there? I-, I think we liked everything, but we spent so much time there. Of course, we liked everything. Um, oh, the dill. Berliner Weiss was very interesting. <laughs> yeah, usually you get a sweetened syrup yeah. with it, but this was dill. We see pickle beer pretty often. Like, we'll do a kettle sour and throw some pickle juice in there. We had a pilsner. So this was not that, but it it, it was evoked pickle beer because it was a little bit sour and it had the dill in it. It was nice. Yeah, it was interesting. 
had a Rogan beer. You want to find oh, yeah. that? Rogan beer is a red rye beer, a little bit sour. Yeah, you don't see that every day no. in a craft brewery, unless you're in um, Belgium. It's, but yeah, a Schwarz beer as well, which was nice. A couple double dry hopped, um, double hazies that were wonderful. A West Coast IPA that was wonderful called Synthesizer. Mars was really good, excellent. But then we found Denier, and it was like, wow. Speaking of, what are Speaking we drinking? <clears throat> so it's unusual for us to do two in the same video, but we really, really like their beer. <laughs> so, Pretty label, too. This is Modern Dune, which is a Kolsch style. You have to say style because I guess Kolsch is Kolsch unless it's made in Cologne. Cologne. In yeah, Germany. Germany. And uh, what else? And then this one... When it's night called When falls. Night Falls. This, uh, I think we had it there, right? It's a, we did have it there, and we loved it. Okay, um, so we actually, that. yeah, you got to read it because it's so it's wild saison, co-fermented with Chan Sangiovese grapes, blackberry, and vanilla, aged in French Bordeaux barrels for eighteen months with Brett. Yeah. So, so much going on there. What do you think, Kolsch first? Kolsch Are you gonna first. just pour them both? Wait, you have a stanga. I have a stanga because we have a stanga <laughs> and this is a kolsch. And the stanga is what you use to drink kolsch. Wait, let me show the stanga. Stanga is a <clears throat> tall, skinny glass. It means, what does stanga mean? Pipe? Pipe. Yeah. And it's the traditional kolsch glass. That's good. Okay. So We're going to, we might share these a little later. Nice looking kolsch. Really nice. Pale straw color, which is correct. Amazing head. That's it's actually um, it's sustaining itself. Got a little bit of sulfur in the nose, which is okay. That's four point seven percent, and this is five point. Really tight. Seven. It's it's got that grainy sweetness um, in the base, and then it's. Mm -hmm nicely hoppy but it's not crazy bitter and it doesn't the bitterness doesn't linger at all it's just a really nicely balanced kolsch mm, you could drink this all day yeah and that's the idea did you just say the abv 4.7 on this one four seven. Five seven on that one and now for something completely different this is um what's it called when night falls when night falls so oh man there's so much going on <laughs> In that nose, <laughs> the wine grapes are evident. The Brett is evident. Brett is another species of yeast that makes the beer taste kind of funky. It's a trick. Belgian thing. It's a Belgian thing. Um, some people say horse blanket or hay or, or barnyard, barnyard, farmhouse. What do you think? Oh, it's yummy. Yeah. Really superb. It's, you definitely a little bit get of sweetness the grapes in there. Yeah, it's not hoppy. It's a little bit all of flavor. A little bit of sweetness, but it's not sweet. Mm -mm. Um, more of a of a fruity. A little bit of a fruit. like a dry red wine. Yeah, okay, similar to that. Really nice. Anyway, anytime we go to a place that makes wild and uh, wild fermentation, or spontaneous, or saison, or farmhouse, we always compare it to the seed in Atlantic City. And you know, well, this place is good, but it's not this. It's not seed worthy. <laughs> we have all these code words. This place, oh my god! And not only is it as good as the seed in Atlantic City, it looks like the seed. It looks like it has the same vibe. Yeah, it's smaller, but it has the same vibe. So, like uh, deer antlers, plants, plants everywhere. Um, M mural. There's a huge mural on the outside of the seed that yeah. is reminiscent of this one. So really, the these guys are kindred spirits. I hope someday they do a collab because they really should. Yeah. They even have the same seats. <laughs> the same chairs, same comfortable. And they're leather really nice chairs. Yeah. You with got, a back. You go to a lot of micros and you sit on these little steel stools. Mm -hmm. and not, not the most comfortable. comfortable. These, you know. But these are uh, yeah, little back support, little cushion. <laughs> they're really nice chairs. Yep. And that's what we had. So that's when night falls. Yep. And the other one in that photo was River Yacht, which is a cold IPA with mosaic, Motueka, and Meridian. Mm -hmm. And then the third one that we tried was a smoked Nordic ale. That was very interesting. Yeah. So it was like a little bit of farmhousey um, funk, but it had a smoke 
character as well. Uh, we also spent some time with the owner. He was very interesting, <laughs> very talkative. <laughs> Which we love. Yeah. I love it when, you know, people are excited about their own product and they want to share information. Just uh, right down the middle, absolutely superb. Because we were only there once, so you hope they're consistent, you know. You hope you go back in a month and it's well, just as good. it had a really high untapped rating. Yeah. I think it was f- over four two. Probably even. the reason the reason we went there. Yeah. It wasn't far from the convention center. We tried to walk. <laughs> We, we got there okay, but we couldn't figure out how to get back. <laughs> there was a railroad yard between oh, man. where we were that and where a, we were trying to get to. That was a long walk. Thank God um, we were right next to the convention center, and there was a huge cosplay convention. So when we saw people in weird costumes, we would say, which way to the convention center? Because obviously true. they had just come yeah. from there. Well, you know, we needed the walk. We drank a lot of beer. Yeah, it was... We did a 10-mile walk to drink, walk off that beer. We took the train a lot because we wanted to go to the Science and Industry Museum, which was kind of far from where we were. Yeah, it was probably six miles yeah, or so. Yeah, it's uh, the site of the uh, exposition, right? The Centennial Exposition. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Unbelievable. Huge. It's just g- ginormous. Like, you've been to the Franklin Institute in Philly, and this was like four or five of them yeah, next to each big. other. And it was a bucket list item for me because I wanted to see U-505, which is the German U-boat, that sat outside for many decades and was in very terrible shape. And they raised a bunch of money, uh, restored it, cleaned it up, moved it into its own in- indoor gallery now. And that was really fun. You got you played with electronic butterflies. I did other things, yeah. I didn't go through the U-boat. But, yeah, I went inside. You pay a little extra to go inside, and I had to. I'm a, you know, I'm a U-boat nerd. What are you going to do? Uh, put that on your list for sure. It was, It's a spectacular museum, and, but big. Man, you need more than a day to really see it all because it's so ginormous. That old pharmacy was cool. Yeah, there was all kinds of neat stuff. That old dentist's office yeah, was scary. Yeah, it was a whole little old town. It was very cute. Here's uh, what's colloquially in... Co- here. Colloquially, no, colloquial. <laughs> Here's what the locals call the bean. <laughs> and tourists call it the bean. Everybody calls it's it the bean. It's a big bean. That's not its actual name, though. What's its actual no, name? No, it's called um, Cloudgate. It's this giant piece of stainless steel, very shiny. It's really, it's pretty. I'm amazed how shiny it stays being out there in the weather all the time. And it does have fingerprints on it. I don't think anybody's polishing it or no. cleaning it with Windex. But. No, but they will check your bag and yeah. want you heavy. for metal on your way into there. Heavy, heavy security. There had been some incidents yeah. uh, recently uh, before we got there. You, you got to go see the bean when, when you go to Chicago. And it's right near the Adams Street Brewery. Yeah, that worked out. Because, you know, you got to get thirsty taking pictures of yourself at the bean. <laughs> yeah. I'm loving this beer. This I'm really, loving this one. Yeah, they're both great. Yeah, they are. Good? Yep. All right. Cheers. Cheers.